welcome to Two Wheels and on this week's show, well, I don't really know what's going to happen because I'm joined by my two colleagues here, Wayne and Jeff. It's not very often we all get together, is it? No, well, there's no. a reason for that. Thank God. <laughs> we don't actually like you. <laughs> but, but this is the last two wheels for, for a while anyway, isn't it? I so believe so. So we thought we'd have a little trip down memory lane, eh? Yes, why not? Very sad, well, very we're sad. we sat here in the sunshine with our Our orange juices, yeah. yeah. I so, can't remember what I did yesterday, mate. There's no hope of me remembering what I've done over the last <laughs> blinking five, six years. Well, it's been six years, almost six years. October 1996 since we started. And during that time, Jeff, you ridden hundreds of bikes true and I'm going to ask you a question now that people ask me all the time and I can never give them a good answer really what's the best bike your favorite bike out of all the ones you've tested the favorite bike well probably the most memorable bike well it was a favorite as well but the one that really sticks in my mind is Ducati's foggy rep I already had a Ducati 888 but when I rode that it just blew my mind apart and I actually went out and bought one that's how much I thought of it once aboard the foggy rep you get this strange strange feeling you know it's not Carl's World Superbike, equally important, you're not Carl, but you think it is, and you are. Depending on the bend, you could be at Brands, Donington, or even Misano. On the straights, you drop it down a gear or two just for the fun of it. Take a handful of throttle and the power explodes into action, catapulting you forward, or even skyward. The revs rise, the titanium exhaust bark, and the bike comes alive. No tingly vibes or anything so soft, just great dollops of poke, enough to make you laugh out loud with the sheer madness of it all. It's not the lightest, quickest handling of bikes, but it is rock solid. It's like the whole Ducati thing, it's all about involvement. It needs an input from you, and I for one prefer it that way. Sanitised, it ain't. Well, I'll tell you what, Jeff, you look like you really enjoyed yourself there on that I bike. Did. You were at Wonderful. one with it. I was at one with it. So did you really go out and buy one? I did. Honestly, I paid real money for it, and I've still got it, and I love it to death. It's well, how fantastic. is it you can afford something of such exotica and expense, and I can only afford a blinking mountain bike? A lifetime of clean living. Dead what, easy. What are you trying to say, Jeff? <laughs> anyway, Paul, go on, tell us your favourite beast, your favourite machine favourite machine, it's difficult to pick one, but I would say one that was very important at the time, and it's still very important because it was the fastest production bike, and it still is the fastest production bike today, was Suzuki's Hayabusa, and I was privileged and honoured to be one of just a handful of UK journalists to have a, an exclusive ride on the uh, the world launch, it was a Cataluna circuit in uh, Spain near Barcelona, and it was just absolutely terrific, what a great time. So here it is, at last, the GSX 1300R, or Hayabusa. A strange name, you might think. Well, I'll explain. Apparently, the Japanese designer was looking up into the sky, admiring a peregrine falcon, which they say cuts through the air at over 300 kilometers per hour. And the Japanese name for peregrine falcon is Hayabusa. So there you have it. That's your history lesson for this week. But just think, if that same guy would have been in an office in Manchester looking out of the window, we could be here today test riding the Suzuki Pigeon. Doesn't have the same ring to it, does it really? But I've not come here to talk to you. I've come here to play. So I'll see you later. The Hayabusa is a physically large machine. And my first impressions before actually climbing aboard were that it looked bulky and heavy. And it didn't seem like the kind of machine that would be at home on a racetrack. My, my, how wrong can you be? That was the most memorable part of that test that you did. This Suzuki Pigeon made in Manchester. Yeah, it wouldn't quite have worked, would it? <laughs> no, no, didn't not, have the not same at all. Ring no, to it. Not no, at no. All. But a great bike and, and still a great bike today. Very popular. What about you, Wayne, then? We spoke about us. What's your favourite machine that you've been on? Machine? I'm glad you refer to it as machine rather than motorbike. Due to the fact that you always end up sticking me on scooters and mopeds and things. Because oh, you love them so much. Well, that's true enough. I do enjoy the, the scooters and mopeds. But I did ride the odd bike. And indeed, I did ride a Hayabusa. Did now, you? I bet you never came out of a, a, a roundabout in second gear on full chat did you? On well, your high boost. That would be a silly thing to do really, wouldn't it? Dangerous. Well though. I did that actually, yeah. But then again I did have an advantage because I had three wheels. It was a trike supplied by the trike shop down in Cardiff. Oh boy, it was very memorable. But there's even one more item needed to make this thing go well and quick. The key. <laughs> do you want to go fast? Oh I do, I'm excited. <laughs> Well, you can't help getting excited about a machine like this. It has, believe it or not, been clocked at over 170 miles an hour. Perhaps it really does need that wing on the back after all. 
Riding in a straight line is really not that much different to a normal motorcycle. It's when you need to turn that the fun starts. It is surprisingly sensitive on the steering, almost to the point of being a little twitchy until you get the hang of it. So there we are, you see, I did get the chance to go on a real motorbike. It is a real motorbike, the higher Yeah, bus, I had it? a bit of a problem that I couldn't find the side stand. Was it not? I bet you didn't fall off it, did you? No, not? it's very true. <laughs> Kept my feet up all the time. Oh, obviously, a natural way. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not all about riding machines, is it? A lot of it's uh, about travelling. We've been covered thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of miles. Well, that, that's riding machines, though, isn't it? But at least it's yeah, going yeah. somewhere, isn't it? But, but you know, you've got some places you like, don't we you? Have, have. Manny, I've yes. been to the USA. Have you? Yeah. On expenses, of course. Oh, yeah. That's oh, the oh, other oh, side of Accrington. Missed, <laughs> <laughs> no, missed that one. We have been to some good places, Jeff, haven't we? Touring on the bikes. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And what about you? You went off to get yourself dusty, didn't you, as well? Andorra, was it? Do Andorra, through the Pyrenees. Yeah, fantastic. Riding in the snow. Yeah, falling off in the snow. They said it, was, uh, it would suit novices, they said. I don't think so. That'd be why they chose you, of course. <laughs> I think you need to be a fairly accomplished rider to sustain that sort yeah, of trip. No, that, that was, that was but, good. Uh, yeah, some great trips. What's the furthest fi trip? Furthest afield, you might say. The furthest afield is probably him. Where, where did you get Without to? Without a bike. But I did go on Honda's 50th, when Honda had their 50th anniversary. And no, I didn't go to the first one. <laughs> well, <laughs> Waiting we for these two to say that. <laughs> but it was absolutely fantastic because they had all their works machines there, they had their races there, Jim Redman was there, and even Tommy Robb, our local guy, he was there too. They had the Formula One cars as well and all the sounds and the atmosphere. Absolutely fantastic. It really was. Right, <laughs> what's the matter, fellas? What's the matter? <laughs> Hours and what 50k? Look at the state <laughs> Now, you've never seen so many Ducatis in all your life. There were literally thousands of them, 30,000 owners at least came there, and they had every model you could possibly think of. That unique clutch rattle just echoed throughout the whole weekend. Absolutely fantastic. You could just absolutely lap it up, you could drink in the atmosphere. Monsters certainly seem to be the number one fave in Italy because there were absolutely hundreds and hundreds of those and they were all tarted up in one way or t'other. Well, you look like you enjoyed yourself, fellas. You didn't send me a postcard, I noticed. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> sorry about that. But I did joke a bit about the USA, or the side of Accrington. There's obviously nothing wrong with Accrington and that no. part of the world. Uh, I did travel a little bit, I must admit, I did. I remember going to Italy. You came with me, I although did. I didn't have a lot to do with you at the time. <laughs> I was embarrassed. I made you walk two paces behind me, if my memory serves me right. Uh, but that was quite a memorable... That was Monte... Monte... Uh, well, it was near Venice, anyway. Um, <laughs> and that was for the Oxdar boots. Good trip then, was it? A boot specially designed for someone with big, wide feet. No, obviously, this is not the finished product. Although we've got the top half, the bottom half is decidedly important. For no other reason than, obviously, to keep your toes warm and dry. We need the bottom bit, we need the sole putting on. To do this, we need this. And this is a very big and important part of it. This is the last. Each one of these are shaped perfectly for each and every boot, so the shape is obviously crucial. The two are then mated together. The top half of this is then warmed up. And Franco over here, who is a specialist at his job, although he's using a piece of fancy equipment, he does indeed need to know exactly what he's doing. And he's gonna stretch over the top of the last, the top half of the boot. And then it's glued onto the bottom sole. Then, his mate Alessio does the back half of it, because the back half of it, obviously, is as important as the front half. And that's a skilled job as well. And it finishes the process off bonding the inner sole with the upper part of the boot. And that machine there does just about everything he needs it to do, even makes it a round of toast in the morning. Well, I hope you're enjoying this little uh, trip down memory lane, this little reminisce over the last six years or so, or almost six years of two wheels. We need to uh, recharge our glasses now, but uh, we've got lots more to look at uh, when you rejoin us after the break. It'll be all round then, Paul. You'll be needing this. <laughs> My round? I think so. I got him last week.
Welcome back to Two Wheels. As you can see, we've recharged our glasses. I've got a half and Wayne's got a pint. How have you got a pint? Well, I just wanted a pint, but it's not what I wanted. I was so hungry, I wanted some food. I mean, I'm so hungry I could eat a blinking grizzly bear, mate. Would you? Surely not. Oh, my God. Hey, that's spooky, isn't it? <laughs> That was quite that's amazing. You've that? just got to think about it and it just appears. Is that's that right? Yeah. Is it? Funny just enough, think about you know, it. Leave it, leave it, it Paul, leave you, it. You started me thinking about things, thinking about bears and you doing that. Do you remember that shoot that I did with um, Jade, that model? It was the, the <laughs> cross. Forget it, you lucky pig. <laughs> didn't involve you getting undressed, did it, Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> but it was a crossbow calendar shoot. I don't know whether you saw that one, but it was real a bit of a novelty this was, so glamour models were on this one. We could only show them with some form of clothing on. Not very much. But it's very interesting. I couldn't find anywhere to clip the mic. These two were very generous. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Jeff, now then. Just a little exciting, you might say. Yeah, it was pretty interesting. Something different. Yeah, it was indeed. <laughs> How is it then that you got on that shoot and we didn't? I mate? never got invited on that. Oh, well, they could trust me. You see. Yeah. They couldn't trust you two with that. And I imagine there's a fair bit of uh, outtakes and some footage that we well, didn't get a chance to see. it's funny you should say that, you know, because <laughs> the cameraman we had is no longer with us, but he took a hell of a lot of footage and we didn't use it. It was only a three-minute item, I think, and where all the footage went, I don't know. <laughs> but he's got it. <laughs> ah, no, no, not guilty, mate. Not so guilty. go on then, Paul. What's the most exciting thing you did that didn't have naked ladies in it? Uh, exciting things. I would say probably the most exhilarating thing, uh, sheer seat of the pants, would be when I went stunt riding with uh, Dave Coates, lad from up in the north northeast, a fantastic uh, stunt rider, and I became his passenger for the day, and it was absolutely awesome. Just one minute, Paul. What? what? I'm not going to practice. I think you're going to have a go. Well, no, not yes. on here. Oh, yes. On the front? Yes, Paul. <laughs> on the front? Can I go on the front? No, you can go on the back. I'm a terrible pillion. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, well. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> Paul, it was obvious that you enjoyed that, but what about Dave? I mean, he's more used to having Sandra on the back, isn't he? Well, he is. That's the normal team, isn't it, Dave and Sandra Coates? But uh, I was just uh, privileged. <laughs> he's he's slurping away. He's a pig. He's an absolute <laughs> piggy grit, isn't he? Check him anywhere. Yeah, Sandra's a lot lighter than me, so it makes life a bit easier Most for Dave. people are lighter than you, Paul. But, uh, well, yeah, most of them, but it was great. It was fantastic. Well, look, this guy wants to muscle in on the thing. You yeah, want to, you want to there, tell yeah. us about something exciting that you've done? Oh, and you've and done I plenty, done haven't you? Lots of exciting things, most of which we couldn't put on television. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but motorcycle related excitement, yeah, well, I've, you know me, I've always liked to be that bit on the side, you might say. I've heard it. I do I... like my sidecars, and I did get the opportunity to go um, with a really sort of strange, wild chappy. Well, he certainly was when he got the handlebars in his hand on a speedway sidecar. Mm. I've stood in the globe of death. Now, that was exciting. Or was it frightening? Ooh, I mean, it's a bit <laughs> fine line, break. fine line. <laughs> and then one occasion where ordinarily, as a passenger, you would sit behind the rider. This bright spark decided to stick me on the handlebars because it was the wall of death. Now that was not exciting, that was just sheer frightening. <laughs> <laughs> He's a bit of an accent man, isn't he, on the quiet this way? And you like a bit of the old excitement, don't you? <laughs> Life's too short, Paul. <laughs> eh? life, life is too short, I agree. If it's got to be done, it's got to be done. And I'm quite short as well. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I have to say, over the years, we've met a lot of famous people, haven't we? Oh, indeed. He's well, met more famous people than us. You've met everybody that's famous. I've, I've, I've 
I class myself for being very lucky and this is one of these plus things of, of the programme that you have been able to get access to, to people and if you remember way back we've been going so long prior to the 97 election when Tony Blair was in the running then to be the leader of the next government actually grabbed a few words with him would you believe I bet it wouldn't manage that now all about biking I wanted to know what he thought about biking then also we had a shadow transport minister, Glenda Jackson, had a word with her too up in Manchester, do you remember? Uh, so you remember, were trying remember, to avoid her at the time. Yes, well, I think she was trying to avoid me, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but, but then when you come into the, the biking field, I mean, did that series of interviews with our man Foggy, another series with Neil Hudson, Jamie Whittam, and they've done other interviews, John Reynolds and Jim oh, Redman right, and Jeff, Tommy no, Rob, all right, then, Sammy no, Miller, and Phil it. Reed. I mean, we, I mean, we amazing, don't get really. the chance to meet Go so, all sort, sort of starstruck when yeah, I think well, of it. We don't know. get that chance, no, do No, we you? meet lots of people, don't we? Not, maybe not quite as famous as these. No, indeed. But, but I would say they're <laughs> equal, equally as colourful. More, more infamous, I agree with you there, mate. Yeah, more infamous, yeah. What's this being really funny out here? What's this? Is this a fancy dress or what? Right, well, no, this is just a welding hat. And what it is, it's a beacon. A welding hat? Yeah. It's a it's welding, welding but, but, but the welding it's hat the acts as a beacon. One at a time now, where have you come from? Wakefield. Wakefield, Cheltenham. yeah. Cheltenham. Aylesbury. Aylesbury. Somebody's got to come from there, so we... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so we won't go... Don't go on... Don't touch on the subject. What's so special about it? Uh, the, the people who, who stays here. Uh, it's, it's great with uh, 5,000 5, uh, members here who are staying here on the camping. And uh, the, 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 the things you can sell uh, yeah. there, you can sell there. Fantastic. Jordy uh, Boy's on tour. Yeah. Jordy Boy's whether you're male or female. Yeah, exactly. Are you, are you a Jordy Boy, love? Yeah. Are you? Boy, yeah. You're Jordy Boy whether you're male or female, right? So go on then, give us a clue where have you come from. I'm from South Shields. Yeah. I'm from Washington. And where are you from, Cocker? Cumbria. <laughs> we See, wear pants! 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 pants. <laughs> Team pants, just is it a kind of is it a ritual thing these these pants? I mean, we wear pants. <laughs> Fine, right. I mean, why why do you wear pants? Top quality. Because our tackle will be hanging because out. Because they're worn. Because it's really not to. So somebody said it's because you've, you've got somewhere to keep your ale. Oh yeah, you keep oh, your yeah. ale in it. Look, look at that. <laughs> it's that fantastic. Well, I think them lads could do with a bit of tuition, don't you, Jeff? Absolutely. I think absolutely. we could teach them a thing or two. Oh, no doubt about it. We've no doubt about it. Taught by the best, haven't we? Eh? Taught by the best. It doesn't show. <laughs> 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 no, we have. We've done a few uh, training schemes. Yeah, haven't we, we have. Couple, you were taken uh, in hand, as it were, by the police, weren't you? Know, I states. was. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was the only time I've been on the right side of the law for a long time. You know, I went out on a police bike, which was great because it had the blue lights and everything. Yeah. With, uh, Chris... Like a little kid, weren't you? Sport, oh, it was weren't you? fantastic with Chris Palfrey. Well, you obviously enjoyed it, but did you learn anything? That's what I want to know. Yeah, I learned a lot, actually. I learned a lot about uh, observation and, and making progress and being in the right place on the road and looking as far in front as you can. You know, defensive riding, really. Yeah. Uh, but it's good. You think you, you, you know, I know you it know all. You know all. I've uh, experienced, done it for donkey's years, but you don't really. And uh, I did learn a lot. Very beneficial, yeah. yeah. As I'm sure your day was when you went to uh, Cadwell. Oh, yeah, the California Superbike That's right, the school. California Superbike School. Hang on, it's Cadwell Park in California. <laughs> no, you've got it the wrong way around. No, this California is... Superbike, you're as bad as him. This is the one in Lincolnshire. Yeah, obviously I'm not learning. Excuse me, excuse me. It's anyway, there. yes. It, was it any good? It was good. It was good day. <laughs> I took the ZZR11, if you remember, just to be sort of um, different as you were. Not a track day tool. But a very difficult bike to use at Cadwell yeah, Park. Here I come. It's a cornering school. Um, uh, Paul. California. <laughs> what are you on about? You said uh, California, I'm ready. I've got my gear, I've got my sun, my sun cream, I've got the lot. <laughs> the California Superbike School. We, we've got this communication from. In California? Problem. No, no, no. Cadwell Park. Not Paul. in California. No. Better off going away, and perhaps I'll catch you later. But haven't you can watch me sort of whizzing round. Oh, that'll you? be a lot of fun, won't it? Yeah, well, please. Well, I've got a job to do. Have a nice day. Yeah. That's what they say. Isn't <laughs> it it? Is. Have, have a nice, nice day. day. Yeah. <laughs>
Oh, well, we'll catch him later. See, we've had our training, Wayne. We've, uh, you know, been trained by official bodies. What about you? Have you got any qualifications? I think it's pretty obvious that, you know, that I've never had any training or got any qualification. No, no, training and me don't go together. For some reason, people don't seem to choose me. Uh, when they're teaching people things. Uh, do you think there's a reason for that? Just, just behind it. Oh, is that it. the reason? Yeah, yeah. yeah. just a last, last course. It is pretty obvious that I never took any training uh, when it comes to TV presenting. Because mm. if anybody out there ever saw the first thing I ever did, which was in the first programmes, Two Wheels Better, it was me doing the original Wayne's Warehouse. Slightly embarrassing. <laughs> First impressions are very important and you're not going to get a very good impression of me wearing this stupid helmet. But we're going to go and talk about very many different things and helmets one of them. Fitting of helmets and borrowing helmets. People do borrow people's helmets when they really should be thrown away in the rubbish bin. Don't. Buy a nice new one. Even if it costs you a lot of money it's worth it. Fit. Most essential part of the thing is get a helmet that fits. And later on in the programmes, what we're going to talk about is the build of the helmet, the BSI approvals, all about the intricacies and pros and cons, and hopefully it'll be a little entertaining, a little informative. And when you do buy a really nice shiny helmet like that, and you choose the right one, you get the important things right, you can do your hair in the reflection. Talk to you about other things later on. Don't drop that, Paul! Well, I hope you've enjoyed your little uh, look back down memory lane with us at uh, six years or so of two wheels. But as we said at the beginning, that's about it now. That's it, the end of two wheels. It is. But we Shame could well it. be back, couldn't we? We it, could be back before you know more it. More of so, a threat than a promise. So <laughs> beware. But don't, don't worry because you won't go short of your weekly dose of biking action here on Men and Motors because there's loads and loads of bike programmes for you to watch. But we were the first one, you know. We were the originals, you might say. We started it all off, didn't exactly we? Exactly where? In yeah. fact, Jeff, in fact, Jeff was the original man to use a wheel. <laughs> two wheels, two wheels, two wheels. Well, 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 well. <laughs> but we've had some fun, haven't we, over the years? We've had a lot of fun and a lot of laughs. All that remains for me now to say is uh, it's good night from me. And it's good morning from me. And it's goodbye from all of us. <laughs>